Hi, I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon, and this is a Team Tech Tour. Today we're going to look at what has to be one of the coolest technology items for RC ever. I'm talking about first-person view FPV, model aviation, the ability to fly your model just like you're in the cockpit. This is possible with the Spectrum VS1100 Ultra Micro FPV system. FPV flying isn't really brand spanking new, but up until now you might have had to piece together the components to make a working system. There is the camera, video transmitter, airborne power source, airborne antenna, and then you need the receiver for the ground station, either a screen or video goggles, power source, and a few other things just to get going. The Spectrum 1100 system has everything you need to start flying FPV in only about an hour. As it comes right out of the box, the system is completely integrated with everything you need to get an airborne system into the air and get you flying from the aircraft. Let's start right now as we introduce you to the VS1100 system. When we started out this tour, I said everything was inside the box. So, let's take a look inside the box. First, we start with the big box, the VR1100 Fat Shark Travel Porter version 4. With antenna, and cords, and battery, and charger, and a bunch of other stuff. Next, we have the VA1100 All-in-One Ultra Micro FPV Camera System. And in a moment, you'll see just how big, or small, this little camera is. And our last item inside the box is the Fat Shark RC Vision Systems charger, battery, and accessories. So let's jump on into it. We're going to start with the big component, the amazing Fat Shark Teleporter V4 FPV headset. Well, let's take a look at our first box, the VR1100 Fat Shark Teleporter V4. The first thing you're presented with is the Fat Shark carrying case. Inside this carrying case, are the following amazing items. We start with the Fat Shark Teleporter version 4 video goggles. The next things you find is a Spironet antenna as well as a 2 cell 7.4 volt 730 milliamp LiPo battery. And finishing off the contents of the pouch are our AV wires, our teleport connector, and our charge wires. Quite a bit to get inside that little pouch. Let's take a closer look now at the Fat Shark Teleporter V4 FPV headset. This is a completely self contained headset that has a built in 5.8 GHz video receiver. It also features twin QVGA LCD displays with a resolution of 320 by 240. It's powered by a 2 cell 760 milliamp. 7.4 volt LiPo battery. To keep things clean and neat, the special carrying case comes with its own lens cleaner. Taking a look at the top of the Fat Shark teleporter, we see the control panel. This allows adjustment to the brightness and contrast, as well as channel select and angle select. The button in the middle also changes your channels as far as frequencies go. There are seven channels available. At the front to the left of the pilot, this is the connector for the Spironet antenna. Let's flip this thing over and see what it looks like on the bottom. Here we have the data connector going to your transmitter to allow for your uh, head tracking. Over here is the receiver on off. Next to that is the, is the audio plug allowing you to put in your, your uh, earphones or headsets and listen to the sounds as you fly. We're unable to actually get any video to you looking through the lens, but that's what the back of the goggles look like. To use this headset, Take the battery and insert it into the head strap. Once inserted into the head strap, the plug with the cover on it, remove the cover. 
plugs into the side of the headset for main power. This is the only on-off control you have, so to turn off the headset, you must unplug it. Of course, it's a good thing to unplug it when you're not in use anyway. Let's take a look at that antenna, the Spironet antenna. It is the best antenna we could put, possibly put on it and has the best reception. Going to the front of the headset, the antenna is simply mounted here. Note that the mast of the headset or antenna is flexible. And so you do need to actually bend the antenna up to put it in its best position for receiving. Make sure that the antenna is vertical in use. It will give you the best system. Going to the downlink kit, we find the truly unique heart of the airborne system. Weighing only 4.3 grams with casing, it is no hardship at all on the UMX series of planes to carry the extra weight. On the downlink kit, the most obvious thing to find is the antenna. It might look a bit weird, but this arrangement is designed to provide the best possible signal coverage at all angles to the receiver. The wire can be bent, so if you have the unfortunate occasion to suffer a rough landing, you can bend the wires back to shape easily if you need to. To give you an idea of the size of the downlink kit, there is your standard hobby knife. And the hobby knife probably weighs three times more than the downlink kit ever will. On the camera body, top panel, you will find the channel select switch. Each time this button is depressed, the transmitter channel will change. There are seven channels to choose from. You need only select the channel that provides a clear picture. You may power the downlink kit with either its own battery or share the battery from the onboard plane using the supplied Y harness connector. Also in this view of the downlink kit, you'll see this black round cap. That's the lens cover. And you can adjust the focus of the, of the lens by simply twisting it. Now that we have the contents of the box out of the way and taken care of, let's rig a plane for flying FPV. My example plane is the E-Flight UMX Radian Power Sail Plane. If you have never tried to fly FPV, the UMX Radian makes a great choice for learning. It's capable of slow, easy flight, making it ideal for learning FPV. It also has plenty of power to climb rapidly to get above the trees and other ground-based items. And best of all, it has a famous Spectrum AS3X stabilization system to keep the radiant steady and stable during the flight. To set up the UMX radiant, you need only to have some double-sided tape and a battery for the downlink kit. We've already placed the components on the aircraft earlier to find out where our balance was to make sure it was not disturbing the original balance of the aircraft. So now we know where to put those components. Here we go. Let's double sticky tape here. And that's where we're going to place our downlink kit. How good is the sticky? Well, it's lifting up the whole airplane. Our next item is going to be the placement of the battery. We've already pre-measured that to know where it goes. The battery has Velcro on it already. There you go, that's it. The airplane is ready to go, just plug it on in and the downlink kit becomes active and starts transmitting immediately. Note that there is no on-off switch on the downlink kit. You must unplug it from the battery to turn it on or off. Now to see if the system works on the ground, let's power up the aircraft transmitter first, followed by the aircraft system. Do a complete flight control check and then turn on the headset followed by the downlink kit. Let's do a flight control check now. There's rudder, there's the elevator, and we're going to leave the throttle alone. We've already plugged in our camera and our headsets, and so let's just see if that really, really works. Here we're getting an image. And there we go, wave. 
And as you can see, our fat shark system is working just beautifully. That's it. Using the video, there may be some things you need to adjust. If the video looks fuzzy, you may need to adjust the focus of the lens. Yes, it is adjustable. Gently twist the lens to adjust the focus, and then try again. You may need to view a bit finer video picture. You can adjust the brightness and contrast of the headset screens using the top control panel. One of the optional features of the VS1100 system is the head tracking capability. This feature allows you to look to the left or right of the plane simply by turning your head while flying. Truly awesome. Now, there are some limitations on the VS1100. Number one is the range. This system is meant to be used on park flyer type models and has a limited range. You'll know when you're getting too far away when you see flashes of static appear on the screen. Also note that you are using a small battery pack and if you're using power from the aircraft main battery to, down, to the downlink kit, your overall flight time will be decreased. Just remember that if you think the battery is getting low, bring the plane home right away. Lastly, fly responsibly. Be in a place where you do not present a hazard to other people, and then fly in a safe manner. Make friends with your new technology, not grudges. That's it for this Team Tech Tour. We hope you've enjoyed this tour as much as we did. FPV is fun, exciting, and really expands the enjoyment of our hobby. I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon, and thanks for taking a tour with us.